No one knows exactly how many elephants there are in Africa. Figures are estimated at around half a million, down from 20 years ago. But one thing's for sure, they were here a long time before humans and are a treasured part of the African landscape. There was a wave of poaching in the 80s, followed by a ban on trade in ivory. The ban was briefly relaxed to allow China and Japan to buy up existing stockpiles, and the price of ivory boomed. Now, while we're concentrating on preserving the rhino in South Africa, the continent is losing elephants fast. There's just no public uh, knowledge at the moment of the wholesale slaughter that's going on right now of elephants across Africa. John, who asked not to use his real name for fear of losing his license, is a professional hunter with much experience of southern and east Africa. When the focus on rhino is finished, um, people are going to turn around and say, well, where the hell are all the elephants gone? One of the world's foremost elephant authorities, Professor Rudi van Arda, says that would be a sad day. The elephant, more than any other species, is a symbol of your failing in your conservation effort or you succeeding in your conservation effort. Zimbabwe is just one African country whose elephant population is being targeted by whatever means. In January, 86 were machine gunned by armed rebels in Chad. Another 200 shot by Sudanese militia in Cameroon. 30 a day are being killed in Tanzania. 11,000 in Gabon in less than 10 years. Africa's elephant population is said to be decreasing by 5% a year. And I go to conferences throughout the world. For a long time I've been doing this. And I've listened to a lot of people. And I always hear of either there being too many or too few. I never hear of a place where the right number exists. This is Wangi National Park in Zimbabwe, the country's wildlife flagship. It's one of the premier places in Southern Africa to see elephants. In July this year, around water holes like this one, hundreds of elephants were found poisoned. This has been, without doubt, uh, the worst poisoning or the worst poaching incident, if you want to call it that, uh, that I think Zimbabwe's ever experienced. Colin Gillies has been counting game in Wangi National Park for a few decades. He's a former president of Wildlife and Environment Zimbabwe. Colin says because Wangi has no rivers running through it, poachers know that the thirsty elephants will come to drink. They know it's a good place to leave poison. There's nowhere else for them to drink. It is just too horrific. He says even hardened hunters battle to accept elephant deaths by cyanide. Definitely doesn't look like they have a good death at all. Uh, a lot of vomiting and, and stumbling around before they die. John says the poison affects far more than elephants. When you get to a waterhole that's been poisoned, it's like a whole story unfolding in front of you. You can see the first animals that came in and died. Um, the, the vultures have come in and fed on them. We found carcasses before that had been surrounded with up to 80 dead vultures around them. Uh, and then, like I say, it's a whole story that unfolds. You can see other animals that have moved away. You can track some elephants that have dragged feet um, and find them dead. The problem is, should this happen in a large scale, like it, for instance, has happened in other places, we are going to see destruction that's completely out of hand. John wasn't surprised when he heard that elephants had been poisoned in Wangi. Because we had seen it happening in Mozambique, we knew that it was coming to Zimbabwe. It was just a matter of time, and we slowly watched it moving south. From the poacher's perspective, cyanide is the perfect weapon. It's far easier to move around with poison in a backpack than it is to move around with a rifle. What we've seen with the guys when they are using rifles is they have to get the ivory cut out of the elephant quickly and move off because they are worried about the noise factor, whereas with poison it makes it a lot easier. They can walk into an area um, not being seen and not being heard, put poison in an area, kill as many animals as they need, as many elephants as they need, take the ivory and move out of there without uh, any disturbance really. Watching him saunter down a Bulawayo street, you wouldn't guess Oscar and Kala's profession. He's an investigative journalist who's made the world of anti-poaching his niche. Oscar knew fairly well early on in the saga that most of the poisoned elephants were in communal lands near a village bordering Wangi. The elephants like the area because there's water nearby. For those who want the ivory, it's the perfect place to trap them. So the cyanide was being supplied by the poachers to the villagers. And to the villagers it was an extra bonus because these elephants to them constitute a problem. Oscar details the whole saga in his environmental blog. They complain that the elephants eat their crops, destroy the vegetation and everything, and even finish the water. 
So when the phenomenon of cyanide came, it was a convenient way of killing problem animals and making money at the same time out of it. Because these poachers were paying the villagers an average of something between five and seven hundred dollars to poison a single beast. Despite the poisoning only making the news recently, conservation activist Johnny Rodrigue says cyanide has been used for some time now in Zimbabwe. The first sign of it was two years ago uh, up in the Mushumbi Pools, which is the northeastern part of the country, where cyanide was used. Uh, ten elephants were killed. Oscar supports Johnny's view. He says bleached bones indicate that some of the elephants were killed a long time ago. From what we have learned from the guys that have been arrested in, the, in connection with this particular scandal in Wange, this thing has been going on for five years. And it wasn't a secret. Cases of cyanide poisoning in five national parks had already been reported in the external Zimbabwean media two years ago. So where do rural villagers suddenly get access to cyanide? Scott has hunted in Africa for 30 years and has witnessed the increased use of cyanide against elephants from east to west. And with all these mines that are opening up, cyanide is much more available to the locals. And then they are apparently paid by some foreign fellows, um, purported, purportedly Asian guys, to go and poison these animals and p pull the tusks. It's actually shocking to actually find out that anybody can just walk into a chemical place and sort of say, I want cyanide, and get sold the cyanide without a license, a permit, or anything like that. However the animal is killed, getting the ivory out of the country is apparently simple. Morning, morning, morning. We'll be surprised to discover that most of the ivory that gets poached here actually leaves the country through legal entry and exit points. Like in this case, just two weeks ago, there is a case that came out whereby a container containing 447 kilograms of Zimbabwean ivory was uncovered by the customs officials in Dubai and it was traced back to Harare International Airport. And they found an immigration officer who actually cleared the person, and then there is another two or so people that have been arrested, and we are not being told who they are. But what you know is that one of them is a Chinese. Wherever the threat comes from, the message it carries is the same. Our elephants are possibly next in the firing line, and the danger seems to be moving south. We've seen it in Shangoni, uh, on a big ranch in Shangoni, where there's elephants coming from Wangi, and they've come there for safety purposes and they're being poached there now. So it's just a matter of time before they actually carry on moving south towards Ghana Resort and the Kruger Park. There's just so much poison around that it's making it very easy for guys to do it and to move around the country doing it. I have been told that the Limpopo National Park, right nice, next to the Kruger National Park, has lost 30 elephants last year. That I got from the Authority of Reserve. So this wave of poaching is real and close. Professor Van Arde takes Tanzania as a random example of a country in the middle of a poaching crisis. He says it's likely that the country lost half its elephants in the last decade. But Tanzania say now has 102,000 elephants. It comes from very good and reliable reports. So it means that they may have lost 100,000 over the last 10 years. So Tanzania alone may have lost 10,000 per year. That means three per day. It's massive, it's huge, it's non-sustainable. This is what people like John wouldn't want to see happening here in the South. Nevertheless, his experience in Mozambique alone has led him to question his future as a hunter. As a professional hunter, it's, it's hard to justify hunting of elephants at the moment, when a lot of us believe that we should be uh, putting more care in, into looking after the herds. Because Africa just wouldn't be the same without its elephant.